There are a huge amount of selection methods within Blender. Some are really obscure, but there are many that are really useful, but not many people know about them. So in this video, I'm going to go through the most important ones and the perhaps not so well known ones that I actually use all the time. You probably know that we can box select by clicking and dragging over lots of objects to box select them. And you can control box select as well. So hold down control, click and drag to deselect a group of objects. Now, hopefully you're aware that you need this icon over the side here in order to use the box select. If I click and hold, you can see there's some other options, which I'll go through in just a moment. Hopefully you also know that pressing A will select all and Alt A will deselect all. Alt is often the undo command of an action. So A to select all, Alt A to deselect all. So if I press A to select all and delete, I can delete all the items in my scene. What I'm going to do is add a monkey into the scene because it's got a bit more topology to talk about. So Shift A to add, that's the same as the add menu up here, mesh, and then monkey. It's got a fair bit of topology, but I'm going to add to this by pressing control and one. That will add a subdivision surface modifier. You can see that in the modifiers just here, a subdivision surface modifier with a level of one. And I'm going to apply this. So now it's part of the object. And when I go into edit mode, you'll be able to see all those extra vertices. So once again, I can press Alt A to deselect all. Now I was talking about the other options in here. We've got circle select, the shortcut key is C and lasso select. And I'll show you how you can use that in just a moment. Let's start with circle select. So if I press C, that changes my cursor to this circle and I can actually paint my selection with the left mouse button. If I middle mouse button, I can erase my selection. Now, in order to get out of this selection mode, I have to right click. So those are the three mouse buttons you need for circle select. And like I say, that is just here in the toolbar and C is the shortcut for that, which you can see when you hover over. Now lasso select, it does say that the shortcut key is L, but that doesn't seem to work and that does something else. But you don't really need a shortcut. You can just hold down control and right click to draw your selection with this lasso like so. So I can go around adding to the selection just by holding down control and lasso selecting like so. If I want to get rid of anything, I can hold down control shift and right click to erase with the lasso like so. That's one I don't see many beginners using, but it's one I use all the time. It's really helpful if let's say I want to select the ear here, I can go to X-ray mode and that's an important aspect of selecting within Blender. Using X-ray mode, I can now select vertices or faces that are in the background. So let's say I go to face mode with three, that's face mode up here as well. Deselect all with Alt A and let's try and just select the ear. So I can lasso select and draw around the ear like this and I've managed to select that area there. And I can obviously go in and add to the selection by coming out of X-ray mode and just adding certain pieces that I need to. And that's all the selection methods that you can find in the toolbar there. One mistake I do see beginners make is accidentally select one of these and then they're in the circle select tool and they don't know how to get out of it because I can't right click out of this because I'm in the circle select. So I have to go back to the selection box here and W is the way of scrolling through those different options. So if your cursor changes for any reason, then it's probably something to do with the fact that you press the W key by accident. Okay, so let's press Alt A to deselect all. Another really useful one is link select. Now in the monkey object, the eye is actually a separate piece of mesh. So it's not joined in a manifold way to the rest of the mesh, manifold being watertight. What that means is I can press L over one of the eyes and that's called link select. And you can see that down here, you have different options with link select. The default is just to select a separate piece of mesh like the eyeball here. And if I press L again over this side here, that will select the other side as well. And then L over my main monkey and you can see that selects the rest of the shape. That's really useful if you have these separate pieces or separate meshes within your object. And you'll see here there's other options there as well. If it's got separate materials or it's separated by seams, you can select that way too using the L key. So again, I'll press Alt A to deselect all. Now, hopefully you're aware as well, we can select edge loops by going to edge mode. That's two on your keyboard for short. And I can hold down Alt and select on an edge for the edge loop that I want to select. So this edge here will select the edge loop going around here. And that always ends on a pole or on an end gone face. And you can see that there and you can see it ends on the actual edge of the mesh just there. So here, for example, you can see it's stopping at that pole there and there'll be a pole the other side as well. You can also select face loops in the same way. So three to go to face mode. To select the face loop, that's slightly different. We have to alt and left click on the edge going across the loop you want to select. So this edge will select all the way around here. You can see that edge loop is kind of strange. It goes all the way around the monkey and partially around the ear. 
and I can select on these face loops by selecting that edge going across the loop. That's the way you select those. I can also hold down Shift and Alt and select other edge loops as well, like so. So again, I'll press Alt A to deselect all. Now another really useful one for selecting loops like that is the shortest path. So if I want to separate the back of the head, for example, I could select from this one and I can control click all the way up to here. That will select the shortest path and I can go round my mesh like so. Try not to go too far because if I, let's say, click over here, it might take the top route or it might take the bottom route depending on the shortest path, of course. So I tend to slowly go around my mesh like so and then I can get my loop, especially if I'm following a different angle from the natural edge flow for the face loop selection. What I mean by that is if I press Alt left click on this, that's a face loop. I'll undo that though. And you can see it changes direction there. So I use the shortest path when I just want to select a row of faces like that in a certain direction. And I could then delete these faces, for example, by pressing delete and then faces. And I've cut my monkey in half. I'll undo that. And again, as I was saying, if I press Alt A to deselect all, just be careful. You can't go from one side to the other and always expect it to work out as you thought because this time it went across the bottom because that's actually the shorter path, whereas I was expecting it to go across the top. So like I say, select one, then go into the middle and then to the end of where you want to finish up. I find that's the easier way to use that. And that's control left clicking for the shortest path. So the last one I want to show you that's really useful is select more or less or grow selection it's sometimes known as. So if I select these faces in here, under the select menu, where you can see a huge amount of different selection methods, you can see the more or less option. This is one I use a lot as well. And you can see the shortcut is control numpad plus. So if I press control and plus on my numpad, I can grow the selection or control and minus on my numpad, I can shrink it. And that's really useful. Let's say I wanted just the end just here. Let's say that's going to be a big massive pupil. Then I can easily select it by just selecting a few and growing the selection with control and plus on the numpad. So again, that's another one that I use all the time. As I was saying, there's lots of other selection methods and some of them are quite obscure. I occasionally use the select random, but you have to realize it's randomly selecting, but adding to your selection. So that's sometimes a quirk of the selection methods. And if I deselect all and link select the eyeball here, there's another useful one under the select menu, which is checker deselect. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work because it gets a bit confused as to how the check is supposed to work. But if I select this face loop around here and then go to select checker deselect, it will deselect every other. And that's one I use occasionally. Within the selection method, there are the ones we've mentioned, but there are some really useful ones within select similar, select by trait as well. But to be honest, I rarely use them. The ones I've just mentioned, those are the ones that I use all the time and they're really important to know. So hopefully in your next Blender project, you'll be selecting like a pro. If you like this type of content, then do check out the links in the description to my playlist on this channel and my detailed courses. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.